Welcome to Tuesday, January 4th, 2022. Welcome to the Day Weather Podcast. A reminder, I know some of you watch this podcast through the Cowboy State Daily email. There wasn't any Cowboy State Daily email last week, but I want to let you know that we continue with the podcast regardless. That's why you want to subscribe to the Day Weather YouTube channel because we keep updating the podcast as much as we possibly can, even through the holidays. Go to YouTube, go to search and go to Day Weather Podcast and subscribe and we'll keep you updated during those off times of the year. This podcast is being brought to you by Chugwater Chili. Chugwater Chili Steak Rub, it's great for steak, ribs, fish, and much more. Go to chugwaterchili.com and use Chugwater Don for 20% off at chugwaterchili.com. Chugwater Chili, the spice of Western life. Lots and lots to talk about. Lots of winter weather is coming. High winds in many areas today. We've got yet another high wind event in the Rockies and High Plains. I know everyone is tired of them, but in a La Nina winter, that just goes, it just goes with the territory. We have a lot of combination of variables working together to bring significant snow to many of you over the next 24 to 48 hours. We have an Arctic surge and snow that's gonna come from the north and go to the south. So the weather deteriorates first to the north, then to the south as we progress through the next three days. Dangerous livestock and travel weather conditions. Some areas of the Northern Rockies will have wind chills of 30 to 40 below zero before this is done. Sub-zero temperatures will happen east of the divide. There's good news for you west of the divide, folks. The Arctic air is not going to have a push deep enough to get over the divide, at least of any consequence. So this is an east of the divide in northern areas that will be hit the hardest. Mountain snows will be heavy again. We'll be measuring the snow in feet in the central and northern Rockies and the Pacific Northwest through the next three to four days. This is the upper level pattern as of this morning. You can see how close together these lines are. The very cold Arctic air is butted up against the warmer Pacific air, and this is causing a very strong jet stream to come into the Pacific Northwest and Rockies. And look where the air is coming from the water. So the jet stream is picking up a lot of water vapor and pushing it into the central and northern Rockies. while well, Arctic air is leaking south slowly underneath the strong jet stream wind aloft. And right now it's a battle between the strong winds coming in from the west and the Arctic air pushing in from the north. By tomorrow, this doesn't look like much. It looks pretty innocuous, doesn't it? But we have a combination of things, and I'm gonna give you the more detail here in a minute. When you put together strong jet stream winds, Pacific moisture and Arctic air, and you put them all together, and then you put that together with the complex terrain of the high plains and Rockies, you get yourself an Arctic snow event. And that's why this doesn't look like much, but when you put it all together and take a closer look at the meteorology, there's a lot going on that's gonna drive this weather pattern. But one you know, big message here is look at the very cold air getting deeper into the United States and the Great Lakes and Northern Plains and Northern Rockies. As we take a look, first we've got to deal with the wind. These are the wind gusts here through the next couple of days. Look at all the yellow and the orange, and really nobody is spared. Nobody is spared in this region from the wind. It's going to be very windy today. We've already overnight had wind gusts of near 70 miles an hour up along I-25 near the Buffalo area. And we're going to have very strong winds hit the I-25 corridor and the, uh, the entire I-80 corridor in this whole pattern, getting into western Nebraska, northeastern Colorado as well. So here we go with the Weather Geek Alert. I'm going to try to explain what's going on. Even though the weather charts don't show you a big low, or a big dip in the jet stream. What is driving all of this? So we're gonna get kind of weather geeky here. First of all, and really most importantly, what we have is a very strong jet stream wind cutting its way southeast across the northern and central Rockies. If you were to look at the wind speeds here, these wind speeds are in excess in this jet stream wind of more than 150 miles an hour in some areas. This jet stream wind is cutting across the area at the same time, Arctic air is coming in from the north and pushing up the divide, basically upslope over the divide. So you have to think in 3D, think in three dimensions and think of the atmosphere vertically from the bottom to the top. At the bottom, Arctic air is coming in upslope from the northeast 
At the same time, above, strong jet stream winds and moisture are going over on top of that. And now this is where we get really geeky. You see this blue oval here? This basically represents, represents the strong jet stream winds. On the nose of the jet stream, the atmosphere gets pushed up. On the back side of the jet stream, on this part of the jet stream, the air goes down. The air goes up on the left corner of the jet stream and down on the bottom side of the jet stream. Now, what this all means is where you see the orange arrows is where the atmosphere gets lifted up. When the atmosphere gets lifted, air cools, condenses, and you get rain or snow. Now, if we were to superimpose this idealized sketch here on top of the forecasted jet stream wind, so this is the oval. What I've done here is tilted it to show you what's going on. So while the maps don't show any particular storm system coming, the combination of the lifting air on this side of the jet here and the lifted side of this jet here is where you're gonna get the heavier precipitation. You're not gonna get much precipitation on the downward motion of the atmosphere. So strong jet stream winds lift the atmosphere. When you lift the atmosphere, you're gonna get clouds and you're gonna get precipitation. And all of this is right on top of the Arctic boundary by tomorrow afternoon. And notice the Arctic boundary is hung up on the continental divide. So the strong jet stream wind I just showed you is coming right across the boundary where the deep upslope and the deep Arctic air is cutting across. And that strong jet stream wind is also transporting a lot of water coming off the Pacific coast and going on top of it. And this is the end result. This is the snowfall forecast through the next three days. Notice that the axis of snow lines up very well with this axis right here of the jet stream. So there's a lot working together to bring this snow event to the region. And if you were to focus in on the potential snowfall amounts, now these numbers might be a little bit high, but anywhere you see the, the darker purple or pink, there's gonna be a pretty good snow event. This will be the best snow event for the North Platte Valley from Casper down to Wheatland, down to Torrington and Douglas, into the Panhandle of Nebraska, Sydney and Kimball. This is the best snow you're gonna see for a while, Scott's Bluff as well. This is an area where the heavy snow, I think, is a real certainty along and north of the Cheyenne Ridge. Now you get south of the Cheyenne Ridge, there's gonna be another streak of heavier moisture and snowfall getting into the Northern Colorado Front Range, but mostly along and north of I-70. Then you can see that the mountains are gonna get clobbered again right here with a good Northwest flow. This is a great flow for the mountains to get clobbered. The entire I-80 corridor is gonna get whacked with snow and wind. I-25 as well, parts of I-90 won't be fun either as well as all the mountain passes. Superimposed on all top of this is the Arctic air. Now this is by Thursday morning. These are forecasted low temperatures by Thursday morning. So you've got a lot of minus 10s, minus teens. Here's a minus 20. Really bitterly cold Arctic air into Montana, here in the Northern Wyoming, down into Casper, Buffalo, Sheridan, Gillette, into Rapid City. But look at the gray. The gray is basically showing that Arctic air is right on the divide. Now for you folks in southwestern Wyoming, Green River, Rock Springs, and Evanston, you are going to escape, as well as Craig here, Grand Junction, Salt Lake, you're going to escape the Arctic chill, basically the sub-zero temperatures. It's still gonna get cold, but this area here could be hit by very high winds as the Arctic air penetrates the Continental Divide. You get a big temperature gradient, and this is an area of high winds with snow showers. It's just gonna be nasty. Travel weather in the region, especially I-80, I-25, I-70, gonna all be impacted by a lot of winter weather conditions. There's another trough coming through over the weekend. Now it's not as intense, and notice the Arctic air, the blue colors are more north now. So the Arctic air is not gonna stick around, it's transient. So the Arctic air is going to retreat, but another wave, is gonna bring snow to the high country. So another round of snow is coming for the weekend. But there is a break in the weather coming next week. We'll talk about that here in a minute. Snowpack conditions have greatly improved. Look at the snowpack in Arizona. All of the snow basins in Arizona are above average. We've been talking about the Sierra Nevada. Anywhere you see blue or green, you are getting into a snowpack situation where it's 90% or above. So this area I'm outlining right here, 
the snowpack conditions are 90% or well above average. Look at the Gunnison, 151% of normal. These snowpack numbers are gonna go up. These snowpack areas here that are in the 80s now will benefit from the snow and will likely be into the 90s. Here's the break in the weather coming early next week. As we get into Sunday, Monday, and Tuesday, we will see high pressure move in, and I think the first half of next week, the western United States will catch a break in the weather. Notice where the cold and the trough is. The cold moves into the northeastern areas of the United States. They're getting pounded with winter storm conditions, and guess what? There's more coming. Good luck for anybody trying to get across the United States through the airports and the roads and highways as winter weather, this is over the next 10 days, has got a firm grip on most of the United States and most of North America. So for those of you in November, December who were wondering if winter was ever going to show up, well, the wonder is now over. Have yourself a good Tuesday. We'll talk to you on Wednesday with an update on the storm.